Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here for this meeting of the Town Board of the Town of Carmel this evening. Before we get started, we're going to have the Pledge of Allegiance, as we always do. So would everybody please rise? And Councilman Borelli, would you lead us tonight? Pledge of Allegiance. a moment of silence to support the troops that can't be home with their families. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> okay, once again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending tonight, and thank you all at home for watching this meeting of the Town Board of the Town of Carmel. We actually have two meetings tonight because last Wednesday's uh, meeting was canceled due to winter storm Quinn, I believe the name of it was. The second one was Quinn. Yeah. Um, so we had to cancel the meeting and reschedule for tonight. So that's why you're seeing a uh, town board voting meeting first. And then we're going to go into the town board work session. We have eight items on the work session agenda and 17 uh, voting items uh, tonight. So for the record, all town board members are present with us this evening, as is our town clerk, Ann Spofford. All the way down to my right, and all the way down to my left is Greg Fulchetti. He's our Carmel Town Council. And uh, Jimmy Gilchrist is, is here with us because he's got a couple of items on the work session agenda. Um, Glenn Drosy is going to be here later on, too, I think, and also um, Chief Kazari. <coughs> Unless I'm going to handle the one for the chief. Yeah, I think I'm going to handle that one. So, um, all right, before we get started, I just want to, I think it's, Appropriate to talk a little bit about the two storms that that we had here in the town of Carmel Winter storm Riley it was the name of it uh, Hit us on March 2nd and that was on a Friday the storm did Considerable damage to the uh, nice equipment Verizon equipment and other uh, utilities in the town of Carmel and in speaking to utility uh, representatives they advised me that there was more damage with this storm than there was for Superstorm Sandy that occurred. And if you can believe that, because we had a lot of damage when Sandy hit us, I think it was five years ago, six years ago. So this storm exceeded that. Uh, and we had 11,000 people without power. I think it was 84%, 84% of the town was without power at one point. And um, that's, that was about 11,000 customers Nice said customers. So a customer is a meter. It's not an individual. So you had 11,000 customers out, which we don't know how many people that was, but we have 36,000 people in the town of Carmel. I bet there were 28,000 or 30,000 out at one time if 84% were out. So we had a lot of people out. Um, the, the utilities um, response to this storm was slow. There wasn't, I don't think they had a, an emergency action plan that they implemented immediately. I think the, uh, um, the preparedness that should have taken place prior to the storm hitting mobilizing line crews didn't happen. So I think the reason there was a lot of frustration on the part of the, the, the homeowners that were out was because it was taking so long for restoration to occur. So um, by the time they brought in mutual aid companies, utilities from as far away as Canada, we had Hydro Quebec people here. And by the way, those guys are fantastic. They were the best. They were the best. They were unbelievable. Their skill set in dealing with utility lines is unbelievable. Well, they're from Quebec, so they deal with that a lot. I get outages up there, I guess, because of where they are up north. But th these guys were unbelievable. Um, so by the time the crews got here and started work in, rest in restoring power, there was a delay. But there's going to be hearings that were already called by State, uh, Senator Murphy, Assemblyman Byrne, and the governor, I believe, declared this area a state of emergency. So, and he, the governor indicated that they were gonna investigate the responses by the utilities. So hopefully, um, they'll be able to address that issue as far as their preparedness and an emergency action plan for the next storm. And, and there'll be a next storm, there's gonna be another one. You know, hopefully not anytime soon, but there'll be another one. So hopefully they'll be more prepared then. Um, so the utility workers that were on the ground here, the boots on the ground, they did an unbelievable job. You can't blame the linemen and you can't blame the tree crews. They were only doing what they were directed to do by management. They did a fantastic job. Um, there were 200 and something poles that were snapped and broken from this storm. There were 12 
thousand uh, wires, you know, utility wires that came down, uh, transformers, there were countless numbers of transformers that were damaged, so uh, the, the damage was considerable. And um, to restore all of that, to make all those repairs, and to bring everybody's utility uh, electric back, it was a monumental job because of a massive amount of damage. So I want to give a, a, a kudos to the linemen that were here, the tree crews that were here, they did a fantastic job. Um, I also want to give, you know, some kudos to the people that helped distribute the dry ice and water here for the residents. We implemented that pretty quickly after the storm hit, and we were able to, to provide dry ice and water to the residents. I want to tell you, we handed out 800 cases of water and about 1,200 bags of dry ice during a three- or four-day period. So, and I want to mention, yeah, I'm going to mention Lynn, Lynn Mongan, Susie's sister, and Lynn's husband, Mike Mongan, they were here the whole time. They did a great job, you know, helping us. I think Dan, Dan Pearsall was here one day, his son, and your mom, Dottie O'Keefe. Sis O'Keefe was here, Susie's mom, handing out dry ice and water. So um, we had a lot of people that, that got involved in this. Mike Borelli was uh, very much involved in it, uh, as Susie was. And uh, Mike even had his daughter, Emily, driving the dump truck that went up to to pick up the dry ice and water behind the Board of Elections building up in Carmel. So, so we even had Emily helping out driving the dump truck. So we did have a lot of help, and I appreciate everybody who did lend a hand, who got involved and, uh, you know, helped us coordinate that. That was a big effort also because, you know, we, this parking lot was full at one point, and we were able to coordinate, set, set it up so uh, people can drive in one end and get their dry ice and water and pull out the other end. So we made that available to them. Um, I can't forget our police departments that were involved in this, Carmel PD, the Sheriff's Department, and the State Police. They did a fantastic job. Carmel PD was out there every day uh, during the day and night in this storm dealing with all the outages. Um, our Town of Carmel Highway Department did an amazing job. Mike Simone and his guys were from as soon as the first flakes started flying on the second from uh, Winter Storm Riley, they stayed. Trees were down all over town. So their, their crews cleared the roads once they're made safe because if a tree brings down wires, the highway crew can't cut up the tree until it's what's called made safe. So the electric company has to come out and say, that's safe to cut. Because you can't have highway crews, tree crews, cutting up a tree that may have energized wires. Plowing. Or plowing, too. Exactly. So, um, so it, was a, it was a big effort. And uh, everybody got involved. And one person that I really do want to thank is our new superintendent of schools, Anthony DiCarlo. Anthony was at the Emergency Operations Center up in Carmel with me. That's where I went right after the storm. Superintendent of schools was there also, the only superintendent of schools in Putnam County that was sitting at a chair at a table at the Emergency Operations Center. So he was there, and he was here with me in the following days in my office on conference calls with NYSEG. When we had a 3 o'clock conference call, he was sitting right there with me uh, as well. So i got to give credit to Anthony DiCarlo for also that. Also outside with the ice. And with the dry ice and water, too. He was helping out with that. So no other superintendent of schools in Mayapak, I can say, ever did that or probably would have done that. So Anthony, my hat's off to him. Kudos to Anthony DiCarlo, our new superintendent of schools. Uh, the decision made by the Board of Education to hire Anthony was an excellent one. He's going to do a great job for the school district in, in Mahopec. So thank you, Anthony. I hope I'm not leaving anybody out. Um, Who's that young man? Who's the gentleman that brought his son? Dan Pearsall. Okay, I, Dan. I didn't know his name. There was also a volunteer that came Saturday and just stayed. Yeah. And then they came back the next day. I have yeah. no idea who his name is, what his name is, but whoever you are, thank you. Yeah, he, um, the, the, the young man with the Dan, his son, Dan Pearsall's son, did it for community service. Okay, so, he worked. So it, yeah, for, he worked. He, he worked. worked. Yeah, he worked for, he, he earned his community service. And we should probably mention the Mayapak Lions Club because they had the dinner. The oh, yeah, the, Susie just reminded me. The Mayapak Lions Club also did a fantastic job. They had a dinner at the Mayapak Fire Department. Yeah, two or three of Was them. it a ham dinner or? Uh, it was um, spaghetti and meatballs. Spaghetti and meatball dinner. Yeah. They hosted that. They invited everybody over, over to there. Um, Temple Beth Shalom is, was a comfort station a warming shelter and a charging station, but they also allowed people to take showers if people didn't have water and they needed to clean up a little bit and take a shower. They offered that to a Temple Beth. Villa Barone, yeah, thanks, Susie. Villa Barone had a, um, when was that, Thursday? 
I think Thursday they had soup and pasta and cold beverages and warm beverages that they opened their restaurant for, the Villa Barone Hilltop Manor. Johnny Creco, Nikki Creco, they covered the cost of the whole thing. They invited everybody who still was without power to their restaurant, and they hosted everybody there. So that, because we still had a lot of people out without power that Thursday after Second Storm Quinn hit. So, um, also, and I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the county executive, Mary Ellen O'Dell. She ran the uh, emergency operations center. Her, her along with Kenny Clare, the uh, Bureau of Emergency Services Commissioner, did a fantastic job, you know, running the EOC. And Mary Ellen was out in the field also. Um, and as you know, we did have one real tragedy from that storm. A young boy, 11-year-old boy, I think his age was, or 12 in Putnam Valley, he, he was killed uh, during the height of the storm on Friday when a large oak tree fell on his house in Putnam Valley. Uh, he was trapped under the tree, and, and sadly, he passed away. Uh, so that was really one major, major loss that we had in Putnam County. And I know the town of Putnam Valley got hit very hard, just as we got hit very hard. Yorktown did, and Somers did as well. The way the storm came across, this, those three towns seemed to got hit the hardest. One other thing. Yeah. Two, two other people. Anyone that had running water that day in a water district, you could thank... Joey Scolan at B&J because he was out 20 hours a day for those four days. I, I know that for a fact. Uh, together with Swaco, fuel oil. Everything was done manually by hand, filling diesel fuel. Yeah. Everything was down. Anybody that was able to flush their toilet in the sewer district could thank Tommy Braun and Evan Sewer because they were pumping out pump pits. I mean, these, anybody that had water or had sewer, a septic, it was, it was not under normal circumstances. Okay. So those guys worked all weekend. Well, they did. Mike, thank That's you it. for that. And, and I'd be remiss if I didn't thank the volunteer fire departments also. Mahopak Volunteer Fire Department, Mahopak Falls, Carmel Fire Department, and Carmel Ambulance were running nonstop, you know, during the storm, too. So uh, they did a great job as well. And they also shoveled out the hydrants that were covered in snow from the two feet of snow that we had. They were out last night or two nights ago clearing all the hydrants as well. The Maypac Fire Department did, and I think the Falls probably did too. So thank you, uh, volunteer fire departments, for all that you did uh, to help the residents of the town of Carmel in your respective districts during these two uh, storm events. So it was really the double whammy that got us. You know, the one storm hit us hard, did most of the damage. The second storm took trees down that were weakened by the first storm. So they were coming down, you know, at the height of the second nor'easter. So, you know, those two storms, you know, we really got hit, hit pretty hard. Thankfully, the, the storm that we just had, the third nor'easter, you know, we had the snow, but it wasn't the, really the heavy, wet snow that, and the winds that did all the damage in the first snow. So thank you, everyone. However you may have contributed, you may have helped your neighbors out. Uh, I know there were a lot of uh, folks that um, got help from a lot of different people that they didn't even know that came out to help people during this storm. So we did a great job, Town of Carmel. Thank you all for getting involved, and thank you all for uh, helping your community and your neighbors out. Great job. Thanks so much. I just wanted to get, you know, mention that at the beginning of the meeting as opposed to the end of the meeting. I thought it would be appropriate to talk about it now. So unless any, do any board members have anything else they'd like to say? I know Mike said a few things. Jonathan, I know you were out running around a little bit, right? You went over to Geimer Drive. You spoke to those folks over there. Yeah, it was, uh, it was quite a storm. Yeah. But yeah. uh, I, while we don't have all the resources that we, uh, we probably need, um, I think it was definitely a, a good experience for us to continue to improve upon how we're able to deliver items and deliver communication, especially in, uh, in times of emergency. Yeah. And you and I had discussed the um, future purchase of some uh, variable signboards yeah. because it's not easy when you have no power, you have no communication, you have no Wi-Fi. You can't really get updates on posts. Um, so it's, it'll be a good thing when we start seeing some variable signboards out here. I think so. I, I agree with you. I think, uh, you know, they would have come in handy if we had them. Yeah. They really would have. But, but I think all in all, so. with the resources that we had, it was an exceptional job across the board. Yeah, everybody. And also, uh, you know, you're going to hear in the coming months, the engineering department is going to come to us with some requests for generators. I think we need to invest in, in, in a couple more generators. I know there's one district that the generator went down because it's an older generator. I think we ought to, you know, look into replacing that one with a newer one, you know, so. And town, our, our generator here went down too. So then the county lent us a generator to run this building, so. And, uh, and, and I think we all heard as well 
In regards yeah. to generators, um, all of our water districts have generators hooked up to them now, except for private water districts. And we got to figure out if there's a way yeah, to I make know. that. Yeah, oh, we have no, to figure I out a way to make that happen. Because I, I heard from multiple residents in yeah. private water districts we, that we, exact complaint. We, we, we do. And you know what a lot of other towns have, too, Jonathan? I agree with you. A lot of other towns have generators that they hook up to their traffic lights, the traffic control lights. They hook generators up to them so, so when there is a top power. Top of uh, Generac was uh, chained to that traffic Was oh, there a Generac there? Yeah. Yeah, because we need them because these three major intersections it's tricky. were down. There were for days they were down, and it's really tricky. John is right. The volume of traffic that flows into those intersections, we need to have generators backing those, those lights up. So we learn some things, you know, from these events. So you going forward, you know, you make those changes and, you know, good things happen, you know, for the better. So sometimes good things come out of these, these bad events and uh, we learn some things and we're going to move them forward. We're going to make some changes here in the town of Carmel also. So um, oh, I also want to, want to mention Amy Sage. She's a legislator um, that her district is entirely within the town of Carmel. Uh, she was very involved uh, in, in, in this whole event. She was at the EOC. Uh, Neil Sullivan, another legislator from Mahopac, was at the EOC. I know Joe Castellano was involved, too. So your legislators, they were out there. They were involved in, in the whole process of trying to help get power restored and getting dry ice and water to people and also going to people's homes to see if they're okay. So really it was a team effort by everyone. And uh, you know, I just want you know, didn't want to leave them out because I know that they were very active and very involved as well. So thank you, one, thank you once again, everybody. <clears throat> Okay, so with that done, we're going to move on to the town board meeting at this time. So the first meeting is our town board voting meeting. And the first item is to accept the town board minutes of February 14th and 21st of 2018. Um, I need a motion to accept those, but I was absent for one. And which meeting did you run, Susie, the 14th? That's a good question. Yeah, I, yeah, I think Susie filled in for me on Valentine's Day. So that's vote on that. Okay. All right. So um, so all in favor for the accepting the minutes? Aye. 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 Motion. A motion, yeah. I need a motion to uh, so move. Okay. Seconded by Susie. So moved by Councilman Lupinacci. Thank all you. those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next resolution, number one, is a resolution authorizing final budget modifications for 2017. Councilman Schneider, would you read number one? Whereas Town Comptroller Marianne Maxwell has reviewed the proposed final budget modifications for the period ending December 31st, 2017 with the Town Board, which are detailed and explained on the attached budget revision schedule, number 2017 forward slash 08. Now therefore be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel hereby authorizes and ratifies the final budget modifications and or revisions for the period ending December 31st, 2017, as showed itemized on the schedule number 2017 forward slash 08, attached here to, incorporated herein, and made a part hereof. I offer the resolution as read. Second. Seconded by Councilman Lupinacci. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilman Lupinacci. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, next resolution number two is a resolution authorizing an encumbrance of 2017 funds for expenditures in 2018. Susie, would you read two, please? Sure. Whereas it is recommended by the Town Comptroller's Office that 2017 government budget funds be encumbered or reserved for the 2018 budget appropriations based on recent approved Town Board resolutions and or specific specific projects in progress for various purposes. Now therefore be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel authorizes the Town Comptroller's Office to encumber or reserve unexpended 2017 government fund monies for expenditures in fiscal year 2018 as follows. Um, the first line is the purpose of an encumbrance, then the account, then the maximum amount, then the explanation, information technology. Do I have to read the account numbers and everything? Um, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, ju the just summarize it. There's, yeah, there's um, technology upgrades for 9168, data imaging equipment for 45,000, software conversion cost for 94,435, plate reader cameras for 25,000, rifle lights for 6,000, police mandated training for 10,000, remaining parks video surveillance for 65,215, basketball court recoding for 24,000, park capital improvements for 100,000. Um, highway fund, 100000 for machin machinery, equipment, capital expenses, and Mahopac Falls Fire Department, 56000 dry hydrant installation estimate. So I offered this resolution as pre-filed in the town clerk. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Second. Okay, offered by Councilwoman McDonough, seconded by Councilman Lupinacci. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilman Lupinacci. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried. And before we go on, I, I'm sorry, I, I knew I was going to leave somebody out and I apologize. Senator Murphy and Assemblyman Byrne were very helpful to the town of Carmel and Mahopac residents as well. Um, he was out actually driving around f from street to street, speaking with utility workers. Uh, Senator Murphy was, and Assemblyman Byrne, I know, was out in his district in Mahopac and Carmel too. So I try not to leave anybody out. Senator and Assemblyman, I apologize, but thank you so much for being here and helping the residents of Carmel, Mahopac, and Mahopac Falls out during this uh, very difficult event for a lot of people. Thank you. Okay, next resolution is a resolution authorizing the mailing of the Lake Cassie Park District newsletter. Councilman Lupinacci, would you read that? Resolved that the Town Board of Town of Carmel, acting as the commissioners of the Lake Cassie Park District, hereby authorizes the mailing of the March 2018 newsletter as prepared by the Lake Cassie Park District Committee to all properties within the district and further directs that the cost thereof be charged as a district expense. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Okay, seconded by Councilwoman McDonough. Roll call vote. Councilman Morelli. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilman Lupinacci. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried. Okay, next resolution number four is a resolution making an appointment to the Lake Secor Park District Advisory Committee, and that's James M. M. Datoma. Councilman Borelli, would you read four? Resolved that the town board of the town of Carmel, acting as commissioners of the Lake Secor Park District, hereby appoints James M. Datoma to the Town of Carmel Lake Secor Park District Advisory Board commencing immediately and to serve at the pleasure of the Town of Carmel Town Board. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Okay, seconded by Councilman Lupinacci. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilman Lupinacci. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you to uh, James Datoma for volunteering and assisting on the Lake Secor Park District Advisory Committee. Okay, next resolution number five is a resolution accepting a proposal and authorizing purchase of park district materials and equipment. Councilman Schneider, would you read five, please? Be it resolved that the town board of the town of Carmel, acting as the commissioners of Lake Cassie Park District and upon the recommendation of town engineer Richard J. Franzetti, PE, hereby accepts the proposal of Uline.com and authorizes the purchase of tables, chairs, and park district facility materials and equipment at a cost not to exceed. $7,309.75 and in accordance with and set forth in detail on the proposal dated January 18th, 2018. Be it further resolved that Town Supervisor Kenneth Schmidt is hereby authorized to sign any and all documentation necessary to accept the proposal and authorize the actions contained herein. And be it further resolved that Town Comptroller Mary Ann Maxwell is hereby authorized to make any and all necessary budget transfers or modifications required to fund the cost of this authorization. I offer the resolution as read. Second. Okay, seconded by Councilwoman McDonough. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilman Lupinacci. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Is this meeting live or is it? Uh, um, it should be live. Yeah. It's not coming over live. Text that, uh, hey, and it's not uh, coming over can you live. check? Can you check with Dominic? To, uh, this meeting should be coming over live, and not the planning board meeting. So if he's if he's if he's taping both of them. Yeah. The town board should be live. Thanks, Ann. I just got a couple of texts saying that it's... Uh, okay, uh, next resolution, number six, is a resolution authorizing payment for emergency repairs for Town of Carmel Town Hall facility. Susie, would you read six? So resolved that the town board of the Town of Carmel, upon the recommendation of town engineer Richard J. Franzetti, hereby authorizes payment to B&J Plumbing, Mahopac, New York, to the sum of $6,938, for good and services rendered in connection with replacement of the hot water heater at Carmel Town Hall facility, all in accordance with the invoice dated February 7, 2018. I offer this resolution as read. Okay. okay, seconded by Councilman Lupinacci. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Schneider? Yes. Councilman Lupinacci? Yes. Councilwoman McDonough? Yes. Supervisor Schmidt? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, next resolution number seven is a resolution authorizing a request for proposals for Carmel Water District Number Two Water Treatment Plant. Councilman Lupinacci, would you read seven? Resolved that the Town Board of Town of Carmel, acting as commissioners of Carmel Water District Number Two, and upon the recommendation of Town Engineer Richard J. Franzetti, P.E., hereby authorizes the solicitation of proposals for the preparation of a comprehensive facility 
uh, an engineering study for the Carmel Water District Number Two Water Treatment Plant. I offer this resolution as read. Okay, offered by Councilman Lupinacci. I need a second. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman McDonough. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli. Yes, with the understanding that the people in Carmel realize this is just a study. It's very important. It's just a study. And there are a lot of questions to be answered before we proceed beyond the study. But yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilman Lupinacci. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mike. It's really just a proposal it's to do the to study. To do the study. So we, yeah. haven't, we yeah. haven't even drawn up the study or hired anyone. It's just a proposal. Yeah. Very, very There's a lot of questions yeah. on that, and this is just a study to figure them all out. Okay, next resolution number, ooh, wait a second. Did I mess that up? Eight, I'm sorry. Eight. Eight is a resolution in support of a commission of traffic studies within the town of Carmel. Did I skip one? No, I didn't. No. I didn't, right? What did you do, John? Seven? Seven, yes, I did. Okay, Mike, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mike Borelli, Councilman yep. Borelli, would you read eight? Yep. Whereas the town board of the town of Carmel has been advised by Lieutenant John R. Dearman, Jr., that the Putnam County Traffic Safety Board has recommended the investigation, study, and remediation of traffic and road conditions within the town of Carmel for purposes included but not limited to the installation of certain traffic control devices, the reconfiguration or realignment of roads and or intersections, the revision of traffic flow and traffic patterns, and the imposition of speed limits at various locations within the town of Carmel. And whereas the town board is further advised that the New York State Department of Transportation and or the County of Putnam Department of Highways and Facilities require a resolution of support from the town of Carmel to pr proceed process said request for investigation and study. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Carmel hereby supports the commission of studies by the New York State Department of Transportation and or the County of Putnam Highway Department of Highways and Facilities for the following purposes and locations. One, the intersection of US Route 6 and Crane Road for consideration of a possible installation of a traffic control signal. Number two, the area and intersections at Route 6 and Hill Street and Myrtle Avenue for the consideration of possible installation of traffic control signals. Three, the proposed imposition of a speed limit not to exceed 35 miles per hour on cer certain portions of West Shore Drive and 45 miles per hour on the remainder of West Shore Drive. Proposed installation of rumble strips in double yellow line of Croton Falls Road, both east and, east and west of its intersection with McLaughlin Drive. Be it further resolved that the town of Town Supervisor Kenneth Schmidt is hereby authorized to transmit a copy of this resolution to New York State Department of F Transportation and the County of Putnam Department of Highways and Facilities immediately. I offer this resolution as read and for the public, in simpler terms, the DOT and the county need us to tell them it's okay to research this. Nothing is happening, they're researching it and they'll get back to us with their recommendations. All right, offered by Councilman Borelli. Second. Seconded by Councilman Lupinacci. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilman Lupinacci. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Kenny, just mm -hmm. quick, in some of the ones that they're thinking the possible installation of traffic control signal, mm -hmm. can they look at also putting it underground, the, um, the wires underground? If you can just mention mm. it to them. Yeah, where the signal, where they would they, put a signal. Yeah, 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 because it just looks so ugly with all the wires coming up. And now, so, I mean, it, it's just where they may say no, but we can ask them. Mm. I think the newer ones, so, uh, you make a good point. The newer traffic signals they're installing, you see how they're installing them now with an arm. Over. There's yeah. a metal, you know, they can a leader over the yeah. road and they hang them off that. Uh, but you have a good point. You know, if they're not gonna, then maybe, the, but, yeah. but the lights have to hang off something, yeah. you know. So, but I'll, I'll mention that. All right. Yep, no problem. Good point. Okay, uh, next, number nine, is a resolution scheduling a public hearing on a proposed local law amending Chapter 147 of the Code of the Town of Carmel entitled Vehicle and Traffic, and this would be for March 21st, 2018. Councilman Schneider, would you read that, please? It's number March, nine. March 28th. Oh, it's, it's the 28th? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. 
28th? The V&T is the 28th. Correct, the V&T is the 28th. 28th? Okay. It's two weeks from today. All right, correction, I'm sorry. It's the uh, 28th, March 28th, 2018, and that's in the resolution, the 28th. Okay. Councilman Schneider, would you read number nine, please? Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel hereby authorizes the scheduling of a public hearing at Town Hall, 60 McAlpin Avenue, Mahopac, New York, 10541, on Wednesday, March 28, 2018, at 7 p.m., or as soon thereafter that evening as possible, on a proposed local law amending Chapter 147 of the Code of the Town of Carmel entitled Vehicle and Traffic, and be it further resolved that Town Clerk Ann Spofford is hereby authorized and instructed to publish and post the necessary notices in the official newspaper of the town and on the town bulletin board regarding this public hearing. However, this resolution is read. Second. Okay, seconded by Councilwoman McDonough, Councilman Lupinacci, roll call vote. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Schneider? Yes. Councilman Lupinacci? Yes. Councilwoman McDonough? Yes. Supervisor Schmidt? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, next resolution number 10 is a resolution accepting a proposal and authorizing entry into an agreement for police accident report processing. Susie, would you read 10, please? So resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel, upon the recommendation of Lieutenant John R. Dearman, Jr., hereby accepts the proposal of, a proposal of Lexus Nexus Koblogic Claim Solutions, Inc. of Alpharetta, Georgia, and authorizes entry into an agreement for the provision of the online police accident report access for Town of Carmel Police Department investigations. Said agreement in form is filed in the office of the Chief of Police and Town Supervisor. And being further resolved that Chief of Police Michael Kazari is hereby authorized to sign said agreement on behalf of the Town of Carmel. And being further resolved that the fees charged by the end users by the Town of Carmel for the services provided in the referenced agreement shall be established annually by resolution of the Town Board. And be further resolved, the Town Comptroller Marion Maxwell is hereby authorized to make any and all necessary budget transfers or modifications required to fund the cost of this authorization. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Okay, seconded by Councilman Lupinacci. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Schneider? Yes. Councilman Lupinacci? Yes. Councilwoman McDonough? Yes. Supervisor Schmidt? Yes. Motion carried. So uh, currently residents um, who were involved in an accident and need a copy of the police accident report, they currently have to physically come here to the Carmel Police Department to get a copy of that report. So this is going to make it a lot easier for everyone because now you'll be able to get it online as opposed to having to drive here and walk in and get it from the records office. So this is great. Technology in this case is wonderful and it'll save some people some time by doing it online. So this is great that they're uh, that the Chief of Police and Lieutenant Dearman are proposing this, so this is wonderful. Thank you. Okay, next resolution number 11 is a resolution scheduling a public hearing on a proposed local law enacting Chapter 140 of the Code of the Town of Carmel entitled Towing and Storage, and the date for that is April 18th, 2018. Councilman Lupinacci, would you read 11, please? Yes, uh, just want to uh, point out that the resolution reads March 28th, but it's being changed to April 18th. I will read the resolution right now. Resolved that the Town Board of Town of Carmel hereby authorizes the scheduling of a public hearing at Town Hall, 60 McAlpin Avenue, Mahopac, New York, 10541, on Wednesday, April 18th, 2018, at 7 p.m., or as soon thereafter that evening as possible, on a proposed local law enacting Chapter 140 of the Code of the Town of Carmel entitled Towing and Storage, and be it further resolved that Town Clerk Ann Spofford is hereby authorized and instructed to publish and post the necessary notice notices in the official newspaper of the town and on the town bulletin board regarding this public hearing. I offer this resolution as read. Okay. Seconded. Seconded by Councilwoman uh, McDonough and Councilman Schneider. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Schneider? Yes. Councilman Lubinacci? Yes. Councilwoman McDonough? Yes. Supervisor Schmidt? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, next resolution, uh, number 12, is a resolution authorizing entry into contracts. Councilman Borelli, would you read 12, please? Whereas appropriations have been made in the 2018 town budget for entry into various contracts for the provision of various services to the town of Carmel, and whereas said contracts are on file, in the office of the town supervisor for the inspection and review of all town board members. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Carmel hereby authorizes the town supervisor to enter into and execute on behalf of the town contracts with the following contractors for the services indicated in an amount not to exceed 
that's set forth below. ASPCA, $7,500. Putnam County Humane Society, $50,635. Reed Memorial Library, $25,000. Mayapak Library, $60,000. The County of Putnam for an outreach worker, $5,000. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Seconded by Councilman Lupinacci. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Schneider. <clears throat> yes. Councilman Lupinacci. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, okay. So here's what I'd like to do before we move on on the agenda items. So it would be uh, agenda item 13, 14, and 15. Um, I'm going to go off our normal protocol as far as public comment is concerned. It's usually at the end of the meeting, but for the purposes of these next three uh, resolutions, I'm going to allow anybody that's here now, any members of the public that would like to comment before the board acts on these next resolutions, I'm going to allow you to come up and comment if you'd like to, because I want to hear from you prior to us voting on them. Uh, which I think is important with respect to these resolutions because it, the, the town board, if these resolutions are approved tonight, would be expending uh, funds to purchase some property in downtown Mahopac for parking and for a uh, passive park in the uh, Mahopac uh, Village Business District area. So as you know, that we, we desperately need parking um, and there is a larger component of this purchase for Swan Cove that will be for recreational use as a passive park. A smaller portion of it will be for parking, um, but that's all going to be determined at some point when the Recreation Committee gets involved with this and makes recommendations on how this uh, Swan Cove parcel will be utilized and uh, the elements that would go into it. So I'm going to ask is there any members of the public that, so let me just read these off real quick. So 13 is making negative determination under New York State Environmental Review in regard to the purchase of a parcel of land approximately 0.64 acres located at 628 Route 6 in Mahopac. 14 is a resolution authorizing the purchase of the parcel of the land, 0.64 acres, uh, and for the town of Carmel, Putnam County, New York, at a maximum estimated cost of $1 million dollars and authorizing the issuance of $1 million of bonds of said town to pay for the cost thereof. 15 is designating officials and authorizing funding for the real property acquisition. So we'll be designating who would be signing the documents at the closing on behalf of the town. Is there anybody that would like to come up and speak on these agenda items before the town board moves forward with voting on them? Mickey, yes. come on up. Just Mickey, uh, give your name, please. Yes. Hi, uh, Mickey Farina. I live on Bullet Hole Road. Mohawk, New York. I've been here my whole life. I'm just a little concerned about the price of the property. I just uh, can't see how that property's worth a million dollars. I don't know, if, you know, with fake news being popular, I saw somewhere that it was bought for four hundred thousand, and then it was sold for seven hundred and fifty. So I just wondering why the town all of a sudden has to pay a million dollars for it. And uh, as far as the parking goes, I'm a little concerned. I don't think, you know, I, I don't know how, especially older people, how they're going to feel about parking there and then walking all the way into town. So, I mean, I'm not anti, uh, you know, progress. But, uh, and then I'm concerned about, I, I mean, we have a park there. How many parks do we need in this town? Sooner or later, I, I'm, I'm a little bit scared that, my property taxes are going to go up. I'll be quite honest with you. So I just really, you know, just want to state the fact that I feel that the property, I don't think it's worth a million dollars. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit experienced in, you know, and you have to tear buildings down. If you want to build something there, you're going to have all kinds of, you know, the DEP is going to be on your back on every move you make. So, I, I, you know, I think, I think we could do better on the price. Okay. All right. Appreciate that, Mike. Uh, Mickey, just so you, so you know, the property under the last reval that the town of Cornwall just okay. went through, it's assessed at $925,000. That was the assessed value of it that they put on it, yeah. the price. So I, I know where you're coming from, though. I hear See, you. That seems high. I, I'm just, who could buy that for $925,000 and do anything with it? Especially with the assessment being that high, the taxes would. Maybe that's why they're selling it back to the town. 
who drive, they can't do anything you know. So I'm just think it's just too high. I, I think personally, I think the piece of property might be worth, you know, 400,000. But that's, you know, I'm not. It's a, you know, it's, so it's it's about uh, Mickey. It's it's roughly it's roughly uh, 200 feet of lakefront property. I know. It's I know. it's then try to buy property on the lake on Lake Mayapak. This is the last piece of property I know, I, I that know. would probably become yeah. available for town use. Right. So I understand, you know, and I, I, you know, so I would just try to negotiate a little bit. I think we could do better than a million dollars on that piece of property. That's okay. basically. And, you know, my concern is spending, you know, I heard we're spending more money on park improvements all over. I mean, you know, we can't really, we got to really be conscious about our property taxes because I know you guys are. I know you are, Kenny. Yeah, no, we, are, we, we all are. I know we, you are. We, we, so I just want to, you know, I'm sorry that I'm waited so long to say this. I should have no, said I'm, it I, sooner than now, but. I'm glad you came up. I'm to, here to now. Speak. That's you know, and that's yeah. what we, we want to hear feedback from the residents. Yeah. You know, and uh, this is your opportunity, you know, yeah. for for you to be heard. All right. And that's why I moved. I changed the agenda protocol around a little bit. I, I know. Wonder. I appreciate that. Yeah. Here, next time you got to come down across river with me. Yeah, I am. Yeah, <laughs> let me know when you're going. All right. We can't next do it till year. next year now. I'll go though. All right. Thanks, Mickey. Thank you Thanks for, for being here. To me. Okay. Thanks, Mick. Uh, is there anyone else that? that would like to be heard on, on these three agenda items that we're going to be acting on. Now's your time for us to hear, hear what you have to say. What is it going to matter? Does what, it really matter what we say? Does it, Kenny? Does it matter? Yeah, does it? Sure it matters. Okay, what? Do you want, no, Frankie, wait, wait. did you? Yeah, if you, you don't Frankie, have to do, you wanna, here. do you want to say something? No, I have nothing to say. I really don't. I mean. Okay. It does matter. It does. It, it does. Of course it does. Great. All right. Are we going to get another tax bill? Is my 96-year-old grandmother going to get another tax bill like she got for the library and the firehouse? Is she? It, it, it'll, be, it'll be in your, it'll be part of your tax. The acquisition of the purchase of it will be part of the tax spread over 13,000 parcels over five years. So there'll be a very slight so we are paying for it. increase. Greg, what was the number you came up with? Doing the math? I think we, we roughed the math out, and, and it was the average parcel would probably be 17 or 18 dollars a year increased over that period. It was 17 or 18 dollars a year for five years on individual tax bills. That's about the increase. All right, thanks, Frankie. Thank you. Okay, is, is there anyone else before we move on and, and act on these resolutions? No? Okay. All right, wanted to give everybody an opportunity, so. Thank you. Thank you, Mick. Thank you, Frank. All right. So we're going to move on now um, to those resolutions. So number 13, it's a resolution making a negative de determination under New York State Environmental Quality Review seeker in regard to the purchase of a parcel of land approximately 0 0.64 acres located 6228 Route 6 in Mahopac. Councilman Schneider, would you read number 13, please? Whereas the Town Board of the Town of Carmel has reviewed the short form environmental assessment form in regard to the proposed acquisition of real property located at 628 Route 6, Mahopac, New York. Whereas the acquisition <coughs> of said parcel is being proposed to promote the health, safety, and general welfare of the persons and property of the Town of Carmel. Whereas the project is defined as an unlisted action and whereas the Town Board has reviewed the full environmental assessment form and assess the projected impacts and their magnitude on the environment in accordance with the seeker regulations and given due consideration thereto. Now therefore be it resolved that pursuant to part 617 of seeker regulation, the Town of Carmel Town Board hereby designates its intention to serve as lead agency for the seeker review of the unlisted action and in this capacity will conduct an uncoordinated review. Be it further resolved that pursuant to 617 of the implementing regulations pertaining to Article 8, of the State Environmental Quality Review Act, the Environmental Conservation Law, the lead agency has determined 
that the proposed unlisted action will not have a significant effect on the environment and be it further resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel hereby determines that based on the information contained in the full environmental assessment form and their analysis thereof, the proposed project will not result in any significant adverse environmental impacts under the seeker regulations and for the reasons enumerated in the attached negative declaration form hereby, adopts a negative declaration in regard to the proposed action. Councilman Schneider. I, if you move to, uh, to offer it as read, just amend full to short. The EAF on the back is a short EAF, not a full. Duly noted. Okay. So if you're going to offer it as uh, as offer as amended uh, by legal counsel, as amended, or just to offer with the amendment that it's a short environmental assessment form, not a full. Offered as amended, Councilor Schneider. Offered as amended as a short environmental form. Second. Second. Second by Councilman Lupinacci. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilman Lupinacci. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Is it on? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. yep. Mine wasn't. Yes. Motion carried. Okay. Next resolution number 14 is a resolution authorizing the purchase of a parcel of land of approximately 0 0.64 acres located at 628 Route 6 in Mahopac, in and for the town of Carmel, Putnam County, New York at a maximum estimated cost of $1 million and authorizing the issuance of $1 million in bonds of said town to pay for the cost thereof. Councilwoman McDonough, would you read 14, please? Sure. Whereas the capital project here and after described as proposed has been determined to be an unlisted action pursuant to the regulations of the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation promulgated pursuant to the State Environmental Quality Review Act, which it has been determined will not have any significant adverse effects on the environment. And whereas it is now desired to authorize such capital project and its financing. Now therefore be resolved by the Town Board of the Town of Carmel, Putnam County, New York as follows. Section one, the purchase of a parcel of land of approximately 0.64 acres located on Route 6, at 628 Route 6 in said town for, said, for use of the construction of a municipal parking lot and or passive parkland including incidental expenses in connection therewith in and for the town of Carmel, Putnam County, New York, is hereby authorized at a maximum estimated cost of $1 million. Section two, the plan for the financing of the aforesaid maximum estimated cost is by the issuance of a $1 million bonds of said town, hereby authorized to be issued therefore pursuant to the provisions of the local finance law. Section three, it is hereby determined that the period of probable usefulness of the aforesaid specific object or purpose is 30 years pursuant to subdivision 21A of paragraph A of section 11.00 of the local finance law. It is hereby further determined that the maximum maturity of the serial bonds herein authorized will not exceed five years. Section four. The faith and credit of said town of Carmel, Putnam County, New York, are hereby irrevocably pledged for the payment of the principal of and interest on such bonds as the same respectively become due and payable. And the annual appropriation shall be made in each year sufficient to pay the principal of and interest. I have to read this whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Of such bonds become and due and payable yeah. in such year. There shall annually be levied on all the taxable real property in said town a tax sufficient to pay the principal of and interest on such bonds as the same become due and payable. Section number five. Subject to the provisions of the local finance law, the power to authorize the issuance of and to sell bond anticipation notes in anticipation of the issuance of sale of the bonds herein authorized, including renewals of such notes, is hereby delegated to the supervisor of said town, the chief fiscal officer. Such notes shall be of such terms, form, and contents, and shall be sold in such manner as may be prescribed by said supervisor consistent with the provisions of the local finance law. Section six, all other matters except as provided herein relating to the bonds herein authorized, including the date, denom denominations, maturities and interest payment dates, within the limitations prescribed herein and the manner of execution of the same, including the consultation 
consolidation with other issues, and also the ability to issue bonds with substantially level or declining annual debt service shall be determined by the supervisor, the chief fiscal officer of such town. Such bonds shall contain substantially the recital of validity clause provided for in section 52.00 of the local finance law and shall otherwise be in such form and contain such recitals, in addition to those required by section 51.00 of the local finance law, as the supervisor shall determine consistent with the provisions of the local finance law. Section 7, the validity of such bonds and bond anticipation notes may be contested only if, one, such obligations are authorized for an object or purpose for which said town is not authorized to expend money, or two, the provisions of law which should be compiled with all the date of the publication of this resolution are not substantially complied with, and an action, suit, or proceeding contesting such validity is commenced within 20 days after the date of such publication, or three, such obligations are authorized in violation of the provisions of the Constitution. Section 8, this resolution shall constitute a statement of, of official intent for purposes of Treasury Regulation Section 1.150-2. Other than as specified in this resolution, no monies are or are reasonably expected to be reserved, allocated on a long-term basis, or otherwise set aside with respect to the permanent funding of the object or purpose described herein. Section 9, this resolution would take which takes effect immediately, shall be published in summary form in the official newspaper of said town for such purpose, together with a notice of the town clerk in substantially the form provided in section 81.00 of the local finance law. I offer this resolution as read. Okay, offer, okay, thank you, Susie. I know it was a lengthy reading. Thank you for offering that. Offered by Councilwoman McDonough. I need a second on second. that. Seconded by Councilman Lupinacci. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Schneider? Yes. Councilman Lupinacci? Yes. Councilwoman McDonough? Um, yes. Supervisor Schmidt? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, next resolution number 15 is a resolution designating officials and authorizing funding of real property acquisition. Councilman Lupinacci, would you read 15? Where is the Town Board of Town of Carmel previously authorized the entry into a contract for the purpose or certain real prop for the purchase or certain real property located at uh, 628 Route 6, Mahopax, New York, 10541, and resolve that uh, Town Supervisor Kinnishman is hereby authorized to and designated to sign any and all documentation required for the Town of Carmel to acquire title of subject property, and be it further resolved that Town Comptroller Marion Maxwell is hereby authorized to issue all checks and funding due to seller in the above transaction for the remainder of the $1 million purchase price, as well as any necessary and related title, title insurance, and recording charges incurred in connection with said transaction. I offer this resolution okay. as read. Thank you, John. That's offered by Councilman Lupinacci. Do we have a second? Oh, I don't know. Um, can we go in executive session real quick with this, or is that not what? something we can go in executive session for? It, it's, it's something you could meet attorney client if you needed to. Attorney okay. client. As opposed to executive session. Yeah, attorney client. Okay. Uh, if you have a motion to do that, it's up to the board. On, on 15, sir? Yeah, I just have a few questions before. Yeah. I, I don't know if the motion was even offered on the resolution, so are we on that? Well, it was offered. Okay. I, I, I made an motion okay. as read. Okay. Okay. So, there's a well, there's a motion as read. Okay. Not a second. Not a second. I don't know what the uh, protocol yeah. is. No, oh, there's a motion now. Does it have a second? No. Does it have a sec? This resolution have a second? Yeah. Did somebody second? But, so so we'll is there something that you just need clarification on, sir? That you want to meet yes. with? Yes. Yes. Okay. So. Do you want to just with with the with the attorney? Yeah, yeah, with the attorney. So we'll have Miss McDonough take a two minute break. Miss McDonough will speak to the attorney. Yeah. All right. You're gonna leave. You're gonna withdraw the motion for the moment. You want to no second? I will withdraw the motion for the moment. Okay. Okay. So the motion is to make a motion after that. Uh, all right. The motion, so we motion. need another motion. To meet attorney-client. I'll, 
make a okay. motion to reinstate it. Okay, so it's it's motion. withdrawn for the time being. Yeah. Um, need a motion Greg? to meet your your so now there's a motion. So I just got to move to meet, meet attorney client if you want. Okay, so I need a motion to adjourn nope. temporarily, just briefly, to until uh, so we can get some questions answered, and then we'll come back and reconvene. So I need a motion attorney, to attorney client attorney client to discuss this particular resolution. So there's a motion made. I need a second. I'll second it. <laughs> and Move. so all those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, okay, so we'll be back. Dominic, uh, stop taping for, for the moment. I'll get back to you when, when we're going to reconvene.